Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. XRP is looking pretty effing sexy right about now. That coming from Roses on the Moon on Twitter, and what she is referring to is this green candlestick here. Uh, when I was uh, looking at this earlier this morning, uh, it ha it was already at 25 and a half cents. So we're seeing a big pop for XRP right now. This is XRP on the hourly. If I put it on the daily for you guys, I'll show you. We are coming out of this, or rather it's looking like we are coming out of this inverse head and shoulders pattern here. Okay, let me draw it out for you. And it's looking like we are going to continue our way up here. We are also seeing it on the Bitcoin chart. Okay, let me bring up Bitcoin here real quick for you guys. And uh, Bitcoin popped yesterday, uh, just kind of hovering just shy of 11,000 per BTC. So we saw a lot of buyers interested in purchasing Bitcoin yesterday. Guys, this is Bitcoin on the hourly and you can see... Uh, the movement yesterday for Bitcoin, uh, we were trading uh, somewhere yesterday morning at around 10,005. And then uh, just uh, this hour, Bitcoin actually did hit 11,000. So XRP is also moving along with it. We're going to keep an eye on the charts and see how this trend continues to move, guys. Of course, we are in a bull run. Ultimately, on the daily, XRP is making higher lows and higher highs. That next level to breach is 34.5 cents, give or take 3.346. Uh, to be exact and uh, for Bitcoin the next level to breach is um, this level that we saw back uh, earlier this summer of 12,500 then we got to move all the way up to about 14,000 that was the level we saw last summer uh, before Bitcoin came right back down again so when you zoom out we are in a bull rally I know it might not feel like that on the day-to-day -day. of course we got to look at it on a broader perspective. We are making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, so 11,000 for Bitcoin and uh, we'll see where XRP follows after that. And guys, uh, just real quick, Ripple CTO David Schwartz will be talking about the XRP ledger and the Internet of Value and the Pay ID initiative at the UBRI Connect next week. This is uh, October 12th to 13th. I don't actually know if it's going to be streamed online, uh, but I'm sure, you know, it's always great to hear David Schwartz talk about uh, the nerdy things that he knows about because he's an intelligent guy. He's just a well of information. And of course, the Pay ID initiative on the docket there, uh, one of these things that is going to really change the way we transfer money, at least at the retail level. Some of you guys have been asking me about Pay ID. Uh, I got mine through Unstoppable Domains. I do have an affiliate link in the description if you guys are interested in uh, getting a Pay ID. That's not the only way to get a Pay ID though, and you don't have to use my affiliate link if you want to do it some other way. That is totally up to you. I just wanted to give you guys the option, but I'm going to keep moving along. Uh, so this breaking news, U.S. Attorney General releases cryptocurrency enforcement framework and on the surface, doesn't this sound great? Well, when I was reading this, it actually didn't sound that great at all. Uh, so this was from the Cryptic Poet at one Cryptic Poet on Twitter. U.S. Attorney General William P. Barr announced Thursday the release of cryptocurrency and enforcement framework, a roadmap for policing the cryptocurrency landscape. Let me read you some of the highlighted points here. The framework provides a comprehensive overview of the emerging threats and enforcement challenges associated with the increasing prevalence of the use of cryptocurrency. It's an 83-page document accompanying the release included three sections, uh, threat overview, law, and future strategy to guide DOJ's handling of the space. The document's release comes two years after former Attorney General Jeff Sessions convened a cyber digital task force to study the ramifications of technological advances. Uh, so despite its relatively brief existence, this technology already plays a role in many of the most significant criminal and national security threats that face our nation. This is a quote said by Associate Deputy Attorney Sujit Raman. Uh, chair of the Cyber Digital Task Force. He wrote this report. There are a number of instances where the DOJ will exert its authority over foreign actors, the report said, namely when virtual asset transactions touch financial data storage or other computer systems with the U.S. if they use crypto to import illegal goods into the country and if they provide illegal services to defraud or steal from U.S. residents. This to me doesn't sound like regulatory clarity. This to me sounds like the letter of the law, the rules, the way they are going to crack down on uh, cyber. It's, it's almost like we're going back three years in the past. Like you guys haven't learned anything about cryptocurrencies yet. So it is kind of frustrating and a little disheartening. Uh, Crypto Penny down here, if you read the article, the release itself, you'll see that it is a negative portrayal. Yes, it certainly is. Um, it doesn't sound like this is really progressive with regards to cryptocurrency adoption uh, in the United States. Of course, 
You know, the United States, the government has their reasons to be framing cryptocurrency regulation in this way, uh, to be treating cryptocurrency a certain way versus another way. Whereas, you know, a lot of a lot of countries in the world are already realizing, look at all the benefits that cryptocurrency can uh, unlock for the future of finance, for our economy, for the country. And I just still don't think the United States is getting it. Uh, and Brad Garlinghouse actually commented on this uh, 70 plus page contradictory report is not regulatory clarity. Many responsible private players are trying to follow the rules, but that becomes increasingly hard when there's no single arbiter of the law. Uh, five plus government agencies with different uh, points of view on cryptocurrency. This uh, with regards to this report, obviously, Brad Garlinghouse co goes on to say, we need a framework like the DCEA that provides clarity, protects consumers and fosters innovations in the United States or companies will move their investment or whole company overseas. And we just heard Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson talk about this a couple days ago. The fact that Ripple is ready to move if the United States doesn't budge on their position. So again, not great. Uh, not great. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I don't know. I can't sugarcoat this. This isn't great news with regards to crypto regulations, uh, w at least within the United States. Now, this might change. Of course, this is coming on the heels of this other uh, piece of news here, a vulnerability in Bitcoin's Lightning Network. Uh, this from Ian Legion. Surprise, surprise there. There was a vulnerability and it was discovered on October 1st uh, and it was in the version 0.10. So to upgrade to the latest version as soon as possible, we have no reason to believe these vulnerabilities have been exploited in the wild. We strongly urge the community to upgrade to LND 0.11.0 or above ASAP. Not great news considering that, uh, you know, the DOJ still has this ideology of, you know, privacy coins, Bitcoin, illegal crime, illicit activity, uh, laundering money. Uh, this narrative we should have left in the past and we should move on. And uh, of course, Bitning, Bit, Bitning, Bitcoin's Lightning Network is also proving that, you know what, uh, Bitcoin can obviously not be that um, mode to transfer value as it was set out to do by Satoshi Nakamoto all those years ago. The good news though, is that there is RippleNet, it does exist, people around the world are using it. And XRP, the token, will command a higher price when there is more demand fueling XRP need. And so guys, we're seeing this every day. Another one here, guys, uh, this one uh, was brought to me by Martin Volk. I also saw it from Mac Attack XRP. Dutch General Bank gives first approval to digital asset exchanges. So a cryptocurrency service operating in the Netherlands has become the first such entity to register with the country's central bank. As per the press statement on Wednesday, the Amsterdam Digital Asset Exchange, the Amdax, said that registration with uh, the DNB bank meant it could now go ahead and process crypto transactions. The firm will also be allowed to store and provide custody of digital assets under the European Union's newly implemented AML5 guidelines that came into effect on May 21st. Those guidelines, uh, which some argue are killing crypto firms across the country, passed the Dutch parliament early this year. And it states down here that these regulations are very strict, usually including additional criteria for client assessments and for trade the origin of money users want to invest. This is the way one should be going about their uh, cryptocurrency laws. You know, there, there's a way to do this and a way not to do this, obviously. Uh, certain countries, I think, get it. They understand the value of cryptocurrencies. They realize that uh, cryptocurrencies are an emerging asset class. And so they are bending over backwards in a lot of ways to be able to foster the adoption of cryptocurrency trading. Of course, that will mean that a lot of these unregulated exchanges will fall to the wayside in countries like the Netherlands. Uh, but, uh, you know, that going back to the United States, taking too hard of a stance, you're not really understanding the landscape not really realizing how this could be beneficial for the country. Anyway, don't want to dwell on that too much. I wanted to thank Mac Attack XRP and Martin Volk for pointing me to that article with regards to the Netherlands and the central bank giving first approval to a digital exchange. And you know what? Obviously in Japan, they're making strides as well. Uh, this uh, brought to me by XRP Crypto Wolf, Ripple Board of Directors and SBI President Yoshitaka Katao spoke to Japan's Prime Minister about regional bank reorganization. And guys, I'm uh, just going to read you a real quick quote on what he said here. Let me translate that real quick. Okay, Yoshitaka Katao, president of SBI Holdings, which develops online securities company, said on the 6th that Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga is eager to reorganize regional banks, saying banks are also undergoing a digital shift. There will be no need for ATMs. 
I think the number can be reduced as much as possible. And he said that the financial world will change drastically in the future. I can't uh, read the rest of this article because it is, uh, you need to sign up for this. But I think this paints an interesting picture, especially considering Yoshitaka Katao is now, uh, I don't know if he's the official, um, the official right-hand man to the uh, Prime Minister of Japan, but he certainly is in his inner circle. I think they are uh, friends in their private lives. And so he's advising the Prime Minister on where Japan's economy should go, uh, you know, how people are moving money. Obviously, Yoshitaka Katao, uh, the uh, president, or rather, sorry, the CEO of SBI Group, which is indeed in a partnership with Ripple. So that's great news for Japan. Moving along, though, guys, uh, this from Mike Manfield here on Twitter, and Temenos Ripple Partner ties with another bank in the Middle East. There are more dots that are being connected, so we know Temenos is Ripple-enabled, and uh, they are a banking software company. Today, they announced that Jordan Ali Bank or rather just dubbed Ali Bank, has gone live with cloud-native Temenos Infinity to rapidly develop and deploy new digital and mobile banking experiences, helping it differentiate and drive customer growth in Jordan and in the Middle East. So working with Temenos, the bank has successfully achieved this while operating remotely due to the beer flu pandemic. Uh, with Temenos Infinity, Ali Bank was able to create a new instant account opening service in just 30 days, providing an easy way for existing and prospect customers to open an account using only their web or mobile phone. Uh, the instant onboarding service and new mobile banking are expected to dramatically accelerate the bank's customer base in Jordan, as well as provide a low cost route to grow and service customers in Palestine and Cyprus. So more branching out there, guys, in the Middle East with Temenos, uh, a Ripple-enabled company. And Alibank is actually taking a phased approach in this, initially focused on Temenos Infinity to transform the digital experience of its personal banking products, including deposit accounts, payments, credit cards, loans, and insurance. In the next phase, the bank plans to deploy Temenos Infinity to accelerate the digital transformation of its corporate banking operations. So... We're finding that a lot of these banks are doing this, right? They're starting, I guess, quote unquote, small with their retail side, which isn't huge, massive payments. But then what they re what, what they do is they, they, I guess they kind of assess how well it's working in that facet of their business. And then uh, if it's a positive outcome, then they will implement it to their corporate banking side, which uh, is obviously higher value payments. And, uh, you know, the same kind of thing is happening within Ripple. Okay, Ripple is ready to do business with the big players, but... Uh, you know, they are they are really kind of focusing on cross-border remittances, and they have been over the last few years, because it's small value payments. It's, uh, you know, it's the migrant worker moving overseas, working and then sending money back home to their family. I think it has been proven as we've been seeing more ODL corridors being opened uh, all the time. So that has been proven for Ripple. And, uh, you know, I, I think Ripple is already ready for this next foray into the financial world. It's just a matter of the regulatory clarity, of course, hindering them at the moment. And this, guy's more great news for Ripple partner D-Local. They were, they're rolling out their payments network further in Latin America. This uh, coming from XRP underscore Kings on Twitter. So I touched on D-Local in the past. Uh, in a recent piece, Business Wire reported that Ripple partner D-Local has expanded deeper into emerging markets. It will now link its customer merchants with markets in three new countries to accept and distribute local payments. D-Local is a top-tier transnational payment service that brings global merchants together with buyers in the developing world. This time, the company announced that it has expanded into three markets in the Caribbean and Latin American regions, uh, the Dominican Republic, Panama, and Costa Rica. D-Local now works with more than 300 local payment companies in 23 emerging countries using its own API-based payments platform. The company is also present in uh, the top five countries in the emerging market with the highest population, namely Mexico, China, Brazil, India, and Indonesia. So D-Local looks like they are bringing it every single month, you know, just adding more business to their roster. And obviously it is important for companies like D-Local to be present in these countries with large populations. Uh, and not only that, countries with large populations where remittance is key, namely Mexico, China, uh, and India, to just name three of the five that they have a presence in. So great news for Ripple company D-Local. And guys, this is the latest news. A lot of people have been talking about this on Twitter. This just in, Ripple now offers XRP loans to RippleNet customers. And this is big. And you know why this is big? I have a feeling that this is what's really going to push XRP demand, and I'll tell you why. So I wanted to thank El Crypto Kings at XRP underscore Kings with a Z on Twitter. Uh, let me read you a little bit about what's going on first. So San Francisco blockchain company Ripple has launched a lending offering, if you guys didn't know that already, called Line of Credit. 
that allows its customers to utilize on-demand liquidity solutions to borrow XRP in order to quickly get access to capital. Guys, this is going to be so important down the road and I'll tell you why. So the new service, which has already been piloted by members of the RippleNet network is currently in its beta stage as reported by you today, Ripple's foray into the lending game came to light in mid-May after they started looking for a director of product management for its loan platform. Back then, the company remained mum about the details of its new offering, although Ripple's ex-head of XRP Markets, Miguel Viez, did offer a glimpse on them on a podcast as early as March 2017, calling lending one of the levers that the company would be able to pull. So, the narrative is gone as such. XRP is going to be necessary to facilitate large payments in the corporate world. Right now, we're seeing XRP being used uh, just for, you know, cross-border remittance payments, anything under $10,000, in which case you don't really need a lot of XRP to transfer these low-value payments. XRP right now is trading at about 25 cents. You know, even at $10,000, you still don't need that much XRP in the grand scheme of things. Why is lending important? is because down the road, when the corporates and the big companies start utilizing XRP to push large value payments, well, that will mean that their competitors, the SMEs, the small to medium sized businesses that want to compete with that, will also need to leverage the same amount of XRP and they just won't have the capital up front to purchase it at that moment. This is good for you and I guys, because this is essentially Ripple telling us there is going to be a big need for XRP and we're going to offer a loan service so that these small to medium sized businesses can compete with the big guys. This is how I'm reading this. So I also wanted to bring your attention to uh, the tweet that they mentioned down here from Ashish Birla, uh, who also talks about this lending service. So customers have told us time and time again that access to capital is the biggest barrier to growth. Scaling quickly is a must. If you're an incumbent with a large balance sheet, that's easy. Startups, SMEs, e-commerce companies, unfortunately lack the resources to do the same. And so if you're understanding what Ashish Birla is telling us here is that SMEs, startups, e-commerce companies, the small guys, they need to be able to compete with the big guys. And if they're going to be using the same system, i.e. RippleNet, they need to still be able to utilize XRP. And you know, one day down the road, when there's that demand for XRP, when it's at a high price, and you are a business that is now competing with the likes of the big guys, you are going to need the money to purchase the XRP that is in such high demand. And uh, now Ripple is offering a way for you to borrow the money from them to use the XRP and then pay them back. Ashish Birla goes on to say, now customers using on-demand liquidity can use the line of credit, which provides upfront access to capital through a single credit arrangement, simplifying access to solutions that let you scale, enter new markets and reach new customers. RippleNet customers use one XRP based arrangement with flexible repay that works everywhere. ODL is available regardless of sending destination or local currency and costs less than traditional providers. I think that is a critical point too. If Ripple wants to be competitive in this market, line of credit allows you to scale and accelerate your business performance. Pilot customers are already seeing the results. RippleNet is evolving guys from bi-directional messaging, settlement, liquidity management to lending. XRP is the key behind what only RippleNet can offer. We're providing customers with financial solutions that were once only available through legacy systems. Now without the cost and overhead, this is the first of many more to come. The internet of value guys onwards. And some people are a little skeptical like Crypto Penny Co here on Twitter. Hmm, not exactly sure what this means. RippleNet is evolving from bi-directional messaging, settlement, liquidity management to lending. Ah, uh, what I see is that Ripple is realizing what they have to do, and this was likely part of their plan all along, and they are just expanding. They are now becoming the Amazon of the financial world, which, uh, which, which we know that they were planning on doing from the beginning. A lot of newbies down here still wondering why uh, XRP price isn't skyrocketing, and guys, I, I, you know, I know a lot of you guys realize this, but there are still some people that just don't get it. And I gotta say, it's really hard to try to cater to everybody on this channel. I know some of you guys already get it. I know some of you guys want to hear new uh, ideas and, and uh, new insights and new developments with regards to RippleNet and the cryptocurrency market as a whole. If you're coming here and still don't know why XRP price hasn't reached the moon yet, well, you should probably watch the thousand plus so videos that I've done over the last two and a half years. Watch those as a starter and then come back and maybe we can have a discussion. Um, 
XRP price, guys, for those of you who still don't know, is following Bitcoin and Ethereum. I even just mentioned this just a couple of days ago when Chris Larson even said XRP price is following Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is why we're not seeing the movement in the market. But guys, when the demand is there and uh, Ripple is setting up the infrastructure for when the demand is there, uh, you know, and they're saying if you can't afford it, we'll help you afford the XRP purchases. This is all great news. And then guys, I saw Anders L here on Twitter uh, adding a little bit more to this story. So it may very well have been that Ripple waited for the Volcker rule change on October 1st in order to offer lending. Let's not forget that this happened. This is, this is a great piece of information here found by Anders L. Uh, so he retweets, or rather he uh, posts a screen grab here. What does this mean? Banks, fintechs can trade and invest as well as hold private equity. Uh, example, rumor is PolySign will manage trade and derivatives. This is not possible without this modification to the Volcker rule. And for those of you guys who don't know what the Volcker rule is, uh, ultimately the Volcker rule generally prohibits banking entities from engaging in proprietary trading or investing in or sponsoring hedge funds or private equity funds. So there's a rule in place uh, to prevent banks from doing certain things that are not necessarily above board. Now there were amendments to this rule and uh, this, of course, the official announcement from Ripple, the line of credit. Today, Ripple launched line of credit, a new beta service on RippleNet that allows customers using ODL to source capital on demand to initiate cross-border payments at scale using the digital asset XRP. And uh, this, so the modification of the rule permitting banks entities to offer financial services and engage in other activities. Didn't we just read that there? No, it wasn't there. It was, uh, uh, okay. Prohibits banking entities from engaging in proprietary trading or investing in or sponsoring hedge funds or private equity funds. So it's not written exactly uh, verbatim, but I think we can all see the point here. The rule will be effective on October 1st. So they waited until October 1st. Obviously, this is all strategic, guys, for Ripple. Not only that, guys, Anderzel goes uh, a little bit further with this and even states, could this also be why we've seen what appeared to be testing in several corridors for months? And he's retweeting his own tweet here. Let's not forget, over the last few months, uh, ODL has decreased. Okay, guys, here's the Twitter page for the Liquidity Index bot, and they uh, they demonstrate the ODL corridor. So this is the XRP European corridor. And uh, you guys can see that since about uh, June, we have seen ODL decrease, and everybody was kind of wondering why, you know, is, is ODL failing? Uh, this is the Philippines corridor with XRP. This is the uh, Australian dollar corridor with XRP. And, and we can see there are waves on some of these charts, but a lot of this trend is the same since June uh, ODL just basically dropped off, okay? We can see that in all these charts. The blue one is the Mexican peso uh, and XRP pairing, and we can see the same trend there. Uh, and then some waves, and some people were wondering, like, what, what's going on here? But Anders Al saying, you know, could this be why we've seen what appeared to be testing in several corridors for months? Could this have been testing? Could this have been something else? Of course, guys, this is all wild speculation at the moment, but it's all painting a very, very interesting picture, considering that uh, Ripple is now offering lending. And let's be honest here, SMEs, small to medium sized businesses aren't going to be borrowing money from Ripple unless it is a large enough value that they cannot afford, okay? You're not gonna be borrowing 10,000 bucks. My thought is, is that these companies are going to need large quantities of XRP to be able to compete with the big guys. And you know, all this just points to the fact, to me, that the demand for XRP one day once the regulations are clear, once we understand that there is a clear framework, the demand will rise, XRP will command a higher price. Ripple has obviously opened the gateway so that uh, customers can now borrow through them, which will in fact create more demand for XRP. XRP, guys, is available on the open market and you know what the open market is. It's all supply and demand. So more demand will push the price higher. And this, of course, will make us all very, very happy campers. XRP Crypto Wolf tweeted this out uh, too, just with regards to the line of credit. Uh, this from AMB Crypto, and I wanted to uh, just wanted to read you guys this line here real quickly because I think this really does uh, give you guys a sense of why this is important. So Ripple's line of credit would provide upfront access to capital for markets. The firm claimed that through this new credit arrangement, Ripple aimed to simplify access to financial solutions that accelerate business performance and scale. Line of credit feature is the latest development. Of course, we know that. Just gonna go down here. RippleNet GM reasoned that this new credit feature was a response to the firm's customers who claimed that access to capital was the biggest barrier to growth 
He added that RippleNet aimed this feature at startups, SMEs, and e-commerce companies that lacked the resources to scale. So guys, again, to democratize the future of payments, you need to have a level playing field, and Ripple is not letting any of their clients be left behind. More demand for XRP will indeed help the price of XRP rise, and Ripple has effectively just told us that they are going to help enable that to happen. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.